Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am Pastor Nanette Christofferson, and on behalf of Pastor Steve Talmadge, we welcome you to this 9 o'clock online and in-person worship service this morning. As you can see, Pastor Steve is gone. He is out on a continuing ed leave and will be back next week. He is up in Michigan at a conference. I, too, will be at a conference this week on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. It's the Bishop's Gathering Conference of all the pastors and uh, lay license leaders. And I will be available through email, or if something comes up, I'm also available. Just call the office, and they will know how to get a hold of me. Feed My Starving Children event is November 3rd, 4th, and 5th, and sign-ups are all online. And if you need to sign up, my husband is not here to help with sign-ups, but maybe you could talk to Walter right there, and uh, he'd be happy to help you with that. Um, the spaces are filling up, so if you have intentions of bringing more people with you or anything, please uh, get your names down so that you can be signed up for the time that you would like. Another exciting event, an opportunity, again, where we can offer um, people from our neighborhood to come to our campus is our fall festival, October 29th. We have people who um, will be doing trunk or treat, and if you would like to be part of that, call Diane Owen or Patty Delaney. Our Love of Christ Community Garden is now open, and not that it wasn't open, but now is a great time to start planting. So if you're interested in a garden plot, please talk to Nancy or Dave Tollefson. More information of that is in the e-news. Communion today will be served, and uh, it is for all who are baptized and who believe may come to the table, they will have, or if you would like a blessing, you may come for a blessing too. We have gluten-free uh, wafers in the, in the center of our bread plate, and we also have red wine on the outer ring and white grape juice on the inside. We also have a blood drive next week, and this blood will be donated to those areas that have had and been hit the hardest by Hurricane Ian. So if you're interested in donating blood, please hop online and you can sign up there, or you can talk to Diane Owen. Last week, we had started our 6 plus 2 video, and it wasn't working, but this week we have it up and running, so we'd like to show that to you now. Good morning. The Love of Christ faith community loves nothing more than visiting with each other, sharing food and music and service to others. But how well do you really know all those that you're sharing all these activities with? The Faith in Action and Faith Formation groups are working together to start a new fellowship group to address how we might better learn about each other and serve each other and is called six plus two. Six plus two is a basic core of six people who meet for fellowship. And at each meeting, they invite two more, the plus two. The plus two can then split off and start their own startup group of six. And the easy part, the fellowship is whatever activity makes your group feel comfortable and a way to really get to know each other other than that hi how are you after church services or the do you need help with that service project that conversation the church now has two six plus two groups and they were started to see if it would work in our community and yes it does so we are now ready to teach others how to start their own six plus two Groups can be made of couples, of singles, of parents with kids, any combination that you want. Our six plus two group thought we knew each other, but we found out through our gatherings about each other's families, about where they grew up, about our professional lives, and about that we just enjoy hanging out with each other. Our groups each had different ideas for get togethers. We met at a park for an easy walk, we had breakfast at one member's house. We enjoyed a lunch after church in the fellowship hall. Another time it was simply coffee and dessert. And another time we spent a beautiful evening dining outside. And of course, because it's a love of Christ, our group also decided on a service project to do together, which was brought to us by one of our members. We all take turns hosting and most groups meet once a month. 
You can use some conversation starter questions that are provided for you, or you can simply start with your own ideas. I'm Patty Delaney, and if this is of interest to you, or if you have more questions, Diane Oyen and I will be at after each service on Sunday, November 13th, to answer any of your questions, or you can please reach out to us at any time. Thank you. Started. I'd like to just thank the band and all their efforts. William is out sick today, and so I'd like to thank John for kind of heading it up and, and all that you'll do today. So thank you so much. And let's stand as we get ready to worship. let us pray. Lord God, we come here gathered to worship you, to offer you our praise, and to give you our heart. God, this is a special space, a sacred time that we've made in our week to be with you. Let us forget all that we have to do this day and fully concentrate and embody this community of love. Lord, might we, through this community, seek your will, 
desire your way and walk in your way of justice. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our worship will continue with our children's message. All right, it's so nice to see you all here today. How are you guys doing? Good. Doing good? Good. Well, today we're going to talk about an Old Testament reading from Genesis 32, where God and Jacob wrestle. Do you know what it means to wrestle? Hmm. Yeah, I think Harrison has a, one idea of where we do an arm wrestle, right? Yeah, oh man, he pinned me right away. Way to go. But wrestling can be more than an arm wrestle. What else can wrestling look like? Yeah, kind of like where someone takes you down, right? And, and if I'm wrestling with someone, am I far away from them or am I up close? Up close. I am up really close when I wrestle with someone. In fact, I'm so close, I'm like this close to someone or like this close and sometimes wrestling, you start off in different positions. You start off on all fours. Sometimes you start off uh, standing up, sometimes like this. But generally, when you wrestle, you get really close to that person. And in our story today, Jacob gets really close to God. Jacob has kind of been running away from God for 20 years. And he gets ready to go back home, and he brings his family with him, and he's worried about his brother. Why would he be worried about his brother? Maybe because he stole his brother's blessing. Do you think his brother's happy with him? No. No, if we steal something from somebody, we don't make people very happy, do we? And Jacob hasn't seen his brother for 20 years. And so that night, before Jacob meets Esau, he has a wrestling match. Who do you think he has a wrestling match with? <gasps> Good job. With God. He has a wrestling match with God. And in it, Jacob asks God for a blessing. And God gives him a blessing. But God also lets Jacob know that this was a wrestle and that God changed Jacob and gave him a new name. And also, a problem with his hip maybe to show Jacob that God is still in charge. But can we wrestle with God? No. I think we might be able to. Sometimes we wrestle with God, and it doesn't look like a wrestling match where I'm going after <laughs> Devin here and trying to tackle her down. But in our prayer life, we can wrestle with God. Sometimes we wrestle really hard. Because we don't know what God is trying to show us. And we struggle because I want my way. But God is saying, no, Pastor Nanette, there's another way to do this. So what I hope, and this might sound kind of strange, is I hope that all the adults out there and that all of you sometime in your life experience a wrestle with God. Because when we do, we walk away changed. So one of the ways we oftentimes hear from God is through prayer. So let's go ahead and let's pray. Can everyone repeat after me, please? Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for being a God who gets in our face and wrestles with us because he loves us so much. Help us to pay attention to the wrestle. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you all. You can go to Sunday school now for those who have Sunday school.
And I'd like everyone to please stand for the gospel acclamation. This morning's gospel is from Luke, chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused. But later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually crying. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quick, quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, good morning. I invite you into a time of imagination, a time of wondering what if the widow were here? Judge, Judge Sampson, I know you're in there. Open your door and hear my case. Bring a decision. Judge Sampson, I know you're in there. I've been knocking every single day on this door because this judge refuses to make a decision, a decision that is obvious. For when I come by, I see him hiding under the table, avoiding me, or I see him drawing into the curtains, hoping I won't see him. This judge that heard my case but will not make a decision, I need a decision soon. This judge who pays no attention to the laws of Moses. This judge who doesn't seem to care about widows or orphans. For you see, on my son's day of bar mitzvah, the day that he became a man, my husband died. And as soon as word got out, my brother-in-law came over to the house and kicked us out, brought his wife and children and kicked us out. We couldn't even take any vegetables from the garden that we had been catering to and working so hard and toiling in the soil for so long. And we finally were having some good crops. And on that day, of my son's bar mitzvah, he became a man, and this land belongs to him. I am seeking justice, justice that is due to me through our laws. All I can do is pray night and day. Pray that my son keeps finding a little job here and there. 
And all I can do is keep persisting. Judge! Judge Sampson! Would you please pray with me? Creator Lord, as we prepare to enter into this parable, Lord, grant us eyes to see the way you do. Grant us ways of which and an open heart of which we might see you in this parable that seems to lack God. Father, Spirit, Jesus, may you enter into the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts, and may it be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Some of you might remember Ray Bradbury's classic science fiction book called Fahrenheit 451. Some of you may have read that in junior high or high school or read it as an adult or even in college. And in this book, the reader experiences a reversal of expectation. The scene is in the future in a totalitarian society, and the role of the firefighter has changed. Instead of a firefighter being the protector and putting out fires of homes and helping protect property, the firefighter now is burning books and starting fires, starting fires in homes that might have these books. And one of the characters in this book asked the firefighter, Didn't firefighters used to put out fires rather than start fires? When Jesus teaches in parables, he's allowed to kind of uh, have role reversals, to have things that we value turned upside down and inside out. When Jesus teaches in parables, he tries to show us the nature of God and make to us a point. Now, I can imagine this particular parable... Perhaps the audience kind of chuckled a bit at this unjust judge. Perhaps they thought it was a little humorous the way Jesus turned this judge's role upside down and inside out. And if we look to the overall idea of this parable, Luke, the gospel writer, informs us that this is to be a parable about prayer. Well, in Luke chapter 17, Jesus is talking about the end times. And perhaps this parable is a reaction to this conversation of end times where he's telling the disciples, you are to persist. You are not to give up, even when it seems like God might be absent. The first century listener understood, the first century listener in a Jewish community, understood the judge to be a symbol, a symbol for their faith, a symbol for God. And so when we see that this unjust judge is turned upside down and doesn't follow the teachings of Luke 10, which are, which are love of God and love of neighbor, that is also part of the Levitical laws in 19, in chapter 19, verse 18, the audience may have thought, whoa, this really is an unjust judge, one that won't even listen to the laws of Moses. This unjust judge won't even hear the cries of this widow. And so we have this widow trying to persist, trying to find justice in a place where she should, but the judge is ignoring the law. I think the first century audience would have understood the widow's problem. Because far too often these laws were overlooked. These laws that were overlooked to protect the widow and protect the orphans were overlooked. We hear through the prophets a constant reminder to the kings, a constant reminder to to God's people to remember, to remember and not forget the widows and the orphans and the strangers. As we look to this parable, we also see that it is about prayer. Jesus is showing us that if an unjust judge listens to a widow like this, God, who is not unjust, 
Think of how much he listens to you and he hears our cries. The widow is persistent and Jesus maybe as a reaction to chapter 17 in the talk of end times, is making sure, making sure that the listeners know they are to be persistent in prayer. And maybe another question on this text is, what does it mean to be persistent in prayer? What does it mean to keep praying, to keep praying and praying, even when our prayers are not answered? What does it mean to be like Jacob, who was persistent in his wrestle with God? Persistent in his struggle. Jane Bernard, in her book, A Praying Congregation, writes about a man who had started um, paying more attention to his prayer life and had joined a prayer group. And she talks to him and she goes, so what has changed? And he goes, well, I'm beginning to have a deeper relationship with God through prayer. And she goes, well, how has your life changed? And she's thinking that he's going to say, oh man, it's amazing. Everything's going really well. You wouldn't believe it. But he looks at her and he goes, well, really, my life is a mess right now. I just lost my job. I have no health insurance. My wife is ill. And my daughter, her marriage is breaking up. It's a mess. But what I know and what I've discovered is that God's presence is in the thick of this mess. And that it is God who gives us strength. Strength because of his faithfulness to us. Prayer is a mystery. We don't know why some prayers get answered and some prayers don't. We don't know why some prayers, it seems like we keep praying and praying and praying. And maybe years down the road, they are answered in a way we never thought they would be. And maybe years down the road, we're still praying that same prayer. And maybe in our lifetime, we won't see that prayer answered. But Jesus is telling us to persist to persist like the widow. And as he asks, will there be faith on earth? He's wondering, will people persist in prayer? Will they wrestle with prayer? Will they have faith? Will they testify to that faith? And will they struggle with their faith? The widow's power was in her persistence. She has sheer Grit. Perhaps we need to ask ourselves, when we pray, are we praying with that same intensity? Are we praying for God's will and not our own? As I was thinking about this parable last Sunday in preparation of the online Bible study, I was driving home from church, and I was thinking about the unjust judge. And I was thinking what Jesus says about the unjust judge. He says the unjust judge does not fear God, nor does the judge kind of like people. He doesn't like people. And no kidding, as I was at the stop sign of Hobart and Power, it was like this nudging. Nanette, could you be the unjust judge. Could the unjust judge be you? For you're not always, always living your life in respect of God and other people. Sometimes I would rather disengage with people. Sometimes I'm unsympathetic towards people. Sometimes I'm critical and cranky and irritable towards other people, maybe even towards God. And if I am the unjust judge, then would God be the widow? God who came vulnerable to us. God who comes vulnerable as a human being. 
God who came vulnerable for the sake of those who oftentimes do not have a voice. Scripture attests, attests to a God, a God who is with us, a God who cries and hears the cries of his people, of all people. But Scripture also shows us that God is within and dwells in the people who are hurting. He dwells in everyone, but he hears the cries of the unwanted, the unloved, the unseen, and the unheard. Could God be persistently knocking at my heart? my heart in which walls have been built. And if this parable is about me being the unjust judge, then it teaches me that God is the one who is always coming at us, persistently showing us, showing us that his fist is knocking down the walls of my heart, showing me his justice, his love, his forgiveness, always coming at it, whether I see it or not. As we look to the question that Jesus asks at the end of the parable, I find it a haunting question. A haunting question that God asks is, will there be faith on earth? When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? Will he find a faith that persists, a faith that testifies, a taste, a faith that fortifies? Will he find that? And the good news is, I believe he will. Because God is persistent. God is always loving, always faithful. Faithful to his promises that we have been given. I believe the Son of Man will find faith. Might we remember that God keeps persisting so that we too will persist in faith to hear the cries of the unwanted, the unloved, the unheard, and the unseen. Amen. Please stand as we profess our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Please be seated. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Lord, in your mercy. For all the baptized, that they become skilled in compassion and grace and equipped to share the good news with all. Grant your followers persistence in proclamation and prayer. Lord, in your mercy. For air and sky, clouds and sun. And Lord God, we just give you thanks for the rain that you have provided over the past day. We pray for rain on the parched lands and relief to flooded grounds. Renew and restore our polluted atmosphere and empower us to be worthy stewards of creation. Lord, in your mercy. For judges, juries, and all who work in the judicial system, that they desire wisdom, seek truth, rule with fairness, and have the courage to do what is right. Lord, in your mercy. For all who are lonely, especially those who have newly arrived in an unfamiliar city or country, political prisoners without recourse to justice, hospital patients without visitors, and any who are ill or grief-stricken. Lord, we lift up those who are new to our prayer list this week. George and Cindy, Ollie, Jerry, Gary, William. Lord, we pause now to list those who are on our heart. As we've listed those on our prayer list and those who are on our heart, Lord, hold them close. Bring them your healing and let them know that your very breath is within them. Lord, in your mercy. For the victims and families of the mass shooting at a daycare center in Thailand, Lord, in your mercy. For those who are still recovering from Hurricane Ian and all of the devastation that it brought, Lord, in your mercy. For peace amid the escalating conflict between Palestine and Israel, Lord, in your mercy. For the safety of protesters speaking out amid episodes of violence in Pakistan, Lord, in your mercy. And we lift up our community of faith, our congregation, and our community around us, engaged in our outreach ministries, for those who lift their voice in seeking justice on behalf of others. Lord, in your mercy. Good and gracious God, we lift up these prayers and we commend for all whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts now as we enter into the great thanksgiving and let us pray. Good and gracious God, as we come to this table of love, this table of forgiveness, this table of your grace. Lord, might we encounter you through this meal. Lord, we know that as we've gone about our week, we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. But through this table of grace, we are forgiven. And might we walk out of this worship space living into that forgiveness and sharing your good news with others. Amen. On the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
And after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good. This bread is my body. 
And let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. And now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please stay standing for our sending song.
my song. Just 